Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the number one way to keto adapt, which is sleep, which you guys don't seem to understand. So I'm going to break it down right Three is always the charm. That's what happens. So, okay, you guys, um, I'm gonna go right into it and not talk about the technical difficulties because the people on the replay won't even have it. So, sorry, you guys. Yes, I'm back. Uh, you know, the system crashed. But I wanna talk about sleep because, well, nobody's getting any. And every time I talk to someone, they say, oh, I get good sleep, but they really don't seem understand sleep and how it can disrupt the entire system. Now I just want to just really preface right away. There are two halves, two sides of the coin and there are two halves to your sleep. There's the first half, there's the second half. Now the first half is your body's trying to repair. The second half, your brain's trying to catch up. And both are very, very important. We have to go, hi everybody coming in. I can see the chat now, sorry guys. There's still an echo. There's a mic turned on somewhere. Can you guys hear me okay? And let me know if there's an echo. All right, so uh, everybody's saying it's echoing like crazy, but he can see that because he can read the chat. No, that's the, the previous before I... Oh, that's the previous, okay. Yeah. All right, we're back. Sounds good now. All right, so there's two halves of sleep, and everyone who thinks that they sleep well, they don't. And the body has to repair at night, so I'm just gonna explain things the way Stephanie loves to do it in layman's terms. So to simplify things, because when you have these experts go on, I do all the research, and I'm like, people are gonna not connect with all of these scientific details when they're not broken down and explained more clearly, like prolactin, like ADH, like uh, leptin and ghrelin. These hormones are involved in your sleep. And if you get melatonin and serotonin and breaking down these, these hormones, if I don't contextualize it, you guys will not retain it. It won't be a tattoo memory. That's my style of communicating with you guys. Now, Doing a video on sleep to keto adapt is not a sexy video, but I'm gonna try real hard to make it sexy. So um, I wanna go and just explain some few things before we go into the slides, which is the day is when your body breaks down and the night is when your body is building up. So break down in the day, do a bunch of stuff, and then at the night time, you're supposed to chill and get into this homeostatic balance and be in a parasympathetic state. That means your nervous system, your breathing, everything begins to relax and your hormones. And the day is sympathetic when you go, 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 go. Now the problem with modern humans is there's no off button. You know what I'm saying? Nobody turns it off. You think you turn it off, but you don't. I don't care who I speak with, everybody thinks they sleep well, you don't. It's almost like people feel like they're being graded when I speak to them and they feel like they have to make things look better than what it is. It's just better to really take a step back, sit down on the bed now, take a sit, step back and really try to understand why the outside does not match, match your sleep, right? because people are like, oh, my energy's fine. So I had a woman the other day in a consultation. By the way, you guys, I do consultations. I have to remember this or else I'm gonna forget. So right there, wait, no, there. 
is my uh, website, stephanieperson.com. Uh, and when I do consultations with people, I really love to talk about sleep patterns. My sleep got better when I adjusted my macros to 250, 300 grams of fat. That's music to my ears. That's what's up. Uh, so, uh, the, the day night cycles, the circadian rhythm, the timing of when you eat and the denial you have to push to the side and look at how you feel. So this woman in a consultation was explaining to me that she had energy. So I said, well, why aren't you working out? She goes, oh, I'm lazy. And I'm like, mm, five foot four, 214 pounds. I'm pretty sure at five foot four, 214 pounds, you are not lazy, you are tired. And people walk around because they don't nap think my energy is stable. But if they jumped into my body, they'd go, energy, energy, energy. Oh, I don't have what Steph has because we become subjective humans over time and don't actually understand our hormones, our energy cycles, our sleep cycles, our strength, our immune system. And so I tried to explain to her, your motivation for not working out comes from probably some adrenal insufficiencies maybe your thyroid because everything slows down when the thyroid hormones down regulated t3 and then i said you know your blood sugar is unstable because you're and i was honest i said you're 214 pounds of five foot four i'm five foot three she's like that much taller than me and um i said your body is carrying all this weight you're estrogenic and your blood sugar is like this boing 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 and then that is going to create issues. I got to look at the counter here. I always forget to look at the, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> at that point, no. Nope. You didn't notice, right? <laughs> and trust me, he's very quick to notice when I don't do something right. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I, this is the reason. She was my inspiration for doing this video because you produce ketones at night. So... You're not adapting or people who are doing carnivore who are trying to heal that gut wall or, you know, people who even dare to intermittent fast, which is the dumbest idea. Sorry. It's, it's a nice concept. It doesn't fit with the modern human schedule. So if you're a hunter gatherer who's like sitting in a freaking hammock, chilling, chilling, it's great to fast, but we don't chill. We're lit. And so now our hormones are not scheduled. They're not in succinct. They're out of order. They're inverted. Your cortisol's high at night. Your freaking melatonin is downregulated. And your cortisol's low in the morning. And this is the reason. And your blood sugar's like, mike, 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 mike. And this is a big reason why you guys cannot sleep. And so you got this big chunk of the first half of sleep. So actually that first half of sleep. So if we go into, let's say, our first slide. All right, let me get away from you over here <laughs> so I got the shadow right here there we go <laughs> okay um so this slide right here is very interesting because it really goes down and can you blow that up a bit so I can see it um, I will try I'll just get closer it's okay so it says total sleep time for different sleep stages. So this is very interesting. So we've got 50% in the, in the second stage. We've got 20% uh, in, the, in the REM state. And then we've got 30% in the third and fourth. So we have five stages of sleep. One, two, hi, Deborah. <laughs> Yes, so Chantal says, Chantal says uh, lack of sleep is definitely felt in my energy levels the next day grateful that it doesn't happen very often. Good. Thanks for all you share. Thank you, Chantel. So, hi me, Mila. So, I thought this was a great, and I did a lot of preparation for this uh, live stream, so I know that the Greek guy was getting really frustrated when it wasn't working and the system crashed uh, because we both put a lot of time to try to put this presentation together. So, as you can see, these are the percentages like this, that you need to think about when it comes to your sleep cycles. And in the first half of sleep, this 30% here, that's like the first and second. It can kind of be bleed into the third. But this first part of sleep, 
you don't you you go into the 90 minute REM cycles but you're in a light stage of sleep that means that you still are semi like your brain is still sort of hearing things and you know people walk across the room or people's husbands come in from watching TV because that's what husbands do and the wife wakes up or the snoring and you're trying to sleep that's when you're very likely to wake up is in that 30 percent and that's when like if you guys are falling in a dream ah, and then you go like this in your in your bed that's that part of sleep right there uh so the hormones that completely stop you and paralyze you and get you deeper so you can repair are not in that 30 percent this is where a lot of you guys either are not sleeping this whole big sunk section of that 30 percent of sleep a lot of you guys don't because you have devices in your bed, your like brain's going 100 miles an hour, you're taking a shower right before bed. And what you guys don't understand is between 9 p.m. and 12 midnight, that's when the big uh, of repairage happens. And then you have from 12 midnight to around 3 p.m. where you have it's broken off into two halves, that first half asleep or two quarters. And um, a lot of you guys don't sleep well in that part of sleep. Unfortunately, a lot of you guys end up sleeping more in that uh, REM state closer to the morning. Now, this is a 90 minute cycle, right? So the the first half of sleep, you guys are sleeping or in this state quite long. We're trying to block that and have you go deeper, sooner, faster, stronger, better. And this is the cycle. You want 90 minutes of this whole cycle that's right here four or five times. If you can get to the fifth one, you fabulous. So at least four times you want to hit these 90 minute cycles. Most of you guys aren't sleeping. You get the sleep apps and you find out that you're only sleeping about, you know, you're awake in this semi-conscious state for like four hours. That's a, that's horrible, right? And then you're in this state, the REM state, like maybe 45, not even 45, y'all are doing like 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes when you really want to hit over an hour in this state. So if we get uh, more into the next slide, and I drink some water because I don't want to be dehydrated. Now getting a great body or fixing health or if you guys have autoimmunity, uh, everything I mean, literally, you could have your macros perfect. You could be like an exercise queen or king or whatever. You can seemingly appear to be healthy. Get away from this. Um, but if you don't sleep well, I don't care who you are, your body's going to fall apart. So I had another consultation uh, a few days ago of a young guy who emailed me and he emailed him back. I get a lot of emails, you guys. And... He was 26 years old and was a third shift night worker and was working all night long and would get, I remember him saying he got home at seven and I was like, okay, did you know that? I said, do you have kids? He goes, no. I said, why don't you work the day shift? And he said, well, it's really, you know, busy streets and crowded in the day. And I like going at night because it's quiet and I can think. And I said, but your body's breaking down. So we're going to go into, and towards the end of our consultation, he got it. It's like, I didn't have to like, you know, beat him down and be like, you got to change this night schedule because a lot of people, their life, right? Expectancy drops by 10 years from being in a night shift job, third shift night worker for too long. And then they have a barrage of health issues before they even that. So you don't want that kind of life. Now let's talk about uh, what happens when you don't sleep. So let's go into another slide. Okay, so here it says when you snooze a yellows. So after crunching the numbers on the more than a thousand participants in a study, researchers found that roughly eight hours of sleep correlates with lower body mass index, lower levels of ghrelin, hormone a hormone that triggers appetite and higher levels of leptin a hormone that signals the body is full so a part of the problem with you guys is your cravings and you th i have so many consultations where women say i'm an emotional eater and i'm like ah, eh, you're just not sleeping well <laughs> your hormones you become leptin 
resistant. There's no signal to tell you when to eat or when to stop eating or when to burn body fat. That's why the leptin part of the ghrelin leptin balance gets so whacked out that the leptin, the signaling to tell the brain, hey, I have enough body fat, I've, I have enough food in the refrigerator, please stop making me hungry and craving weird foods and um, eating late at night, it, which, you know, when, when ghrelin is down-regulated, you guys tend to eat late at night and you overeat and then there goes that roller coaster of blood sugar up and down and then you start to become insulin resistant in that night of not sleeping well. So let's go to the next slide. Red light therapy at night is great. I did it. It helped me go to sleep and gave me melasma, which as you guys can see, I'm getting rid of it. I'm so fabulous to get rid of my melasma. All right. Just one night. They shouldn't have, they should put a disclaimer on those red, red light infrared to be careful for women's faces, some men. Uh, and, and it's not most ethnicities. Well, uh, people of Afrocentric descent tend to very rarely get melasma unless they have a lot of mixes like I do and then I got it. All right, just one night of sleep, okay, creates sleep deprivation. So, oh, sleep, just one night of sleep deprivation, my bad, can make you insulin resistant like a person who has type two diabetes. So I'm gonna explain how that works because people don't understand. You're working your butt off at the gym, people eat late, they feel guilty, they don't sleep well because they have a brick in their stomach from eating late, and then they do a bunch of cardio at the gym and they think they're burning fat. Nothing. What? Oh, okay. I'm just admiring the lights that falls, the technical shit. Oh, good job, good <laughs> job. Not the three times we had to do the video, but everything else, fabulous. <laughs> The colors on you, yeah. the lighting is... You did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. Continue, continue, continue. Okay. So, uh, I struggle with sleep for a reason beyond my cortisol, keto for three years, 67, what, 67 pounds gone battling adrenal issues. So, you're struggling with your cortisol beyond keto, wait, wait, struggle with sleep for a reason beyond my control. That is not true. Unless you have some genetic disorder, you said adrenal issues, but that's your control. I don't move working on my blood sugar, my blood glucose to stay under 100. So when Kathy says that she doesn't have control, yes, you do, Kathy, unless there's some details you didn't mention in that comment. Um, and you're sort of, and there's no such thing as a night owl, super flat. Because in nature, you guys, you know, people are like, oh my God, I get my creative inspiration at night. Well, our bodies don't know that we live inside in modern times with electricity and all this kind of stuff. Our body, our, our bodies are primal. They're designed to survive outside. And I have explained this many, many times. Because we're not living outside, we're freaking so useless. Every hormone in our body is designed to survive. Okay? Not like my, my freaking live stream crashing and, and then my Greek guy's cortisol rising through the roof. That's not the way cortisol is supposed to be used. Cortisol is supposed to be used towards infection and, you know, danger and uh, cold, you know, the, the, the elements. And so because we're not living outside and we're, because if I had a mirror and I showed you like, I've got literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lights blasting my direction. And that's a lot of light. The light around me in this live stream is telling my brain, and, and the time right now is, what is the time? It's 4.40 p.m. The sun's starting to set, but this light is continuing to tell me that it's 2 p.m. in the afternoon, which is why I love these. But I'll go into these in a minute. <laughs> That's the top to my water bottle. <laughs> so we'll go into these, you know, about the methods of blocking out that light to, um, I got some nice keto grease on these lenses, um, to block out that light, to tell the brain to start producing more melatonin and stop this over or inverted production of cortisol. So the, when it says that just one night of sleep deprivation can make you as insulin resistant as a person with type two diabetes, people are like, what? Let me explain to you how that works. So the body's trying to repair. You've been 
breaking down the body all day, and now you're supposed to get into this sort of hibernation state so the body can just do nothing and just repair under less stress of daytime activity. And when you don't sleep or your blood sugar is dysregulated and that wakes you up, or uh, if you don't have the, the right nutrients to, to um, create a better production of ADH, which is a hormone that blocks the sensation of peeing, if everything is chill and your cortisol is down and you don't have like bile releasing from the gallbladder, which can wake you up or liver, uh, liver does not bile, but <laughs> the liver production of bile, then, then uh, we wouldn't have this issue of sleep deprivation. This also goes for the pancreas, okay? The strength of the pa pancreas and how the pancreas is supposed to work. So essentially you have all these organs that pump out hormones to do a job to put the body back in balance so when you wake up you can deal with the stress of the day. But the insulin, the hormone insulin from the pancreas doesn't work very well. The signaling to tell the body, hey, the body's in balance. Let's just take whatever glucose is in the bloodstream. Let's use it up. Let's place it in the muscle. Let's, let's you know, use it for breathing and for heart stuff and for, you know, activity going on. And let's just use up this excess, excess glucose and in a nice, even way, because if you're insulin sensitive, the insulin, the pancreas, the heart, the lungs, the, 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 the organs are all going to do all of their hormonal balancing while you sleep without a problem. But what happens when you don't sleep, the body's under so much stress, like stress, that that pancreatic function becomes instantly down-regulated. Everything gets down-regulated. Your testosterone production goes haywire. So your, your, your gonads men aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Women become estrogen dominant because the estrogen, progesterone, the three estrogens, the um, progesterone and the testosterone can't balance. And when those things can't balance because there's too much uh, blood sugar going on, which is an uh, adrenal response, then everything becomes downregulated. That's good. And everything that's crappy becomes through the roof. So insulin is becoming like it's not doing its job. It's just storing fat. So the next day, your body's in the storing fat mode. The hormones are completely upside down. And so you're, you're going to the gym and you're putting extra stress on the adrenals, which sit within the bodies, in the body, uh, under the adrenals. And now you guys are uh, becoming like the insulin signaling just down regulates even more. It's just like, you have blood sugar and it's trying to go into the cells to be used as energy and the cells like i'm not letting you in because you didn't sleep well so the body's like well we need to get rid of the sugar so boop, fat cell fat cell fat cell fat cell becomes estrogenic because the more fat cells you divide and make the more those cells have the ability to make uh, estrogen and estrogen is an aromatizing effect in men and makes you more fat and as well as um uh, once your hormones, your, your, there's a thing called pregnenolone steel, where too much cortisol because of stress and poor sleep will go through your whole reproductive chain of, of pregnenolone and DHEA all the way down to your hormones and then raise up estrogen real high in men and women. So then you just become this fat machine. And then those fat cells become very, very lazy. And then now you can't, you go to the gym you you become even more insulin resistant, and now the fat cells won't release energy, and here goes the the loop, the cycle of madness. Deborah's reminding you guys to like up the stream because this is a very humble channel, and we only have 44 people watching, and it's like I have to go a whole hour just to get up to 100. <laughs> so the Greek guy and I are trying to find ways. We've actually emailed YouTube like, hey, where are her subscribers? Are they getting their notifications? Because before, I used to get a lot more people in my chat, up to 200 every time, not a problem, but not anymore. And let me see, M-O-H-T-Ville USA says, love your channel. You are very informative. What do you suggest for sleep deprivation? So I'm going to go into that with solutions very soon. Because that can be fixed in everybody. Don't forget to like up the stream, guys. So collapse the chat. Deborah wrote how to do it. Okay, so Hector, you don't wanna to have to rely on to be able to get to sleep, okay? The best way to get to sleep or melatonin or any sleep aids, you wanna be able to reset your circadian rhythm 
clock connected to your hormones. Now, next slide. So this is the same subject. This is the same subject that I just covered that when you don't sleep well, you just get fatter. So y'all who drop your bread and all that, you step on the scale like, oh my God, I dropped, I did keto and I lost like 15 pounds. You didn't lose fat, you just lost water and some muscle because you've become insulin resistant doing keto the wrong way because most people out there, the majority of them, they have nuggets of good information. The professionals, the rest of them. Okay, so uh, let's get on to the next slide. <coughs> Thank you. Oh, Hector is getting triggered because Deborah's having to block. Now, let's talk about this. This, I mean, people go as far as talking about EMF poisoning. Let's just take that aside because we got you. I live in a building, there's EMF poisoning everywhere. Putting this in your face is the dumbest thing. This is what y'all do. I would say that, because I've coached 3,000 people over, I would say that 99% of them have this in bed. That's a lot of consultations over the years. And people are like, oh, I've got the blue light blocking screensaver. I'm like, I don't care. Because when you put, do this, see that guy in that, in that picture? Let's go to his eyes. See? Eyes, cell phone. Muscles have to be used to focus. That's a daytime activity. When you're lying like he is, let me go to where the position he is. When you're lying down, the body wants to produce melatonin, but you're doing this and then this which requires focus. And then that's when we go into the cortisol problem. And now your cortisol, which is the wake up hormone, keeps rising. Now this might relax the overthinking mind, right? But it doesn't relax what's gonna happen here in his adrenals. So his blood sugar is like this now. Now he falls asleep to the phone and boom, he wakes up and boom, he wakes up because the cortisol is too high from doing this. You tell the subconscious mind, which is, let's go to the medulla. You're telling that part of your brain that it's still daytime. And so the body responds by sending all of these hormones throughout the body to not put you in a deep state of sleep. I'm telling you guys, you can't look at anything. I don't care. You can't look at a book. You can't look at nothing. This, if he turned this off and just listened, if he was listening to something, that's fine. But he cannot use those eye muscles because those eye muscles require a lot of energy to wake up. Okay, so Deborah's reminding you guys, if you want to book a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. And we will go over this because when I do my consultations, it's beyond nutrition. Fine. I can put a nutrition plan together with my head on the ground, spinning, blindfolded, doing a yo-yo, yo-yo, bouncing a ball upside down. It's all of this stuff that I'm talking about today that you guys don't think about because all of this has something to do with your blood sugar and ketones and the body healing the gut and dealing with autoimmunity or whatever. So just to bring up a couple of things. Just six, it only takes six hours of, of sleep. So you guys are like, I do so well, six hours of sleep. No, you don't, because you're not hitting those 90 minute cycles, enough of those 90 minute cycles. And every time you go down into the swimming pool and get into deep sleep and to REM sleep, you repair, then you bob back up so you don't get like eaten by a lion or a bear or a predator. And then you kept going down and up and down throughout the night. And so if you're not getting enough sleep, and even if you are asleep, but you're not getting into the deeper parts of sleep, Let's say if you're in bed for nine hours, but you don't hit enough deep sleep, you can't repair, especially the timing of that sleep. So just six hours of sleep itself, just that, even if you're able to go down enough, even if you did hit REM, you're not hitting enough cycles. And that 
can completely change the way your genes express themselves. And I don't mean in a good way. It really does mess with your genetic profile. So um, here's a problem. The thing that's craziest, like I said with the, the estrogen, bad genes get flipped on and good genes get flipped off. You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Why are these things getting turned on? No, we don't want these things to be turned on right now. So you guys really have to think about not putting this in your bed. So the way somebody asked about how to get into a good sleep routine, you have to create a freaking routine that happens around the same time, y'all, every night and every day. That's called the circadian rhythm. That's called a clue. Y'all need to get one. <laughs> oh, so, you know, it's all those things that I was talking about, like, um, when you don't we work out, work out, when you don't, um, sleep well and you go to the gym and people are like, I don't know why I'm not, I didn't, I don't have any strength today. You know, I slept well, everything's fine. No, you don't know what you're doing when you're unconscious people. Stop. I didn't mean sub, I mean unconscious. So just another one night of poor sleep is the reason why you guys have lactic acid buildup. It's the reason why your strength decreases during the workout. It's the reason why you have lack of motivation to even work out. It's, and you know, but that's because people are eating late and they're doing stuff and they're taking showers late at night and they're not paying attention to the circadian rhythm. And then they hit the gym the next day because they ate food late at night and they feel guilty and they had their Thanksgiving dinner and they don't have any energy. So they grab pre-workouts and caffeine. And now you're just making a bigger hole in your body's health and you're aging because not sleeping well fracks up your gene expression and will age you like this. Okay. So, um, is your skin really that smooth or is it just lighting? Well, it's not just lighting. It is that smooth. Okay. There's no filters on here. <laughs> the thing with video is you guys can go take it, screenshot, blow it up. You can see it. If I get closer, it'll just get blurrier. If you guys see the videos I've been doing at home with my cell phone, I have the phone like this close to my face. You can see my skin better on, let's say, yesterday's video that I that I uploaded, and you can see it quite clear. Uh, okay, so the whole thing about like thyroid function and people want to heal their gut wall and people want to fix their thyroid and their adrenal insufficiency and you know people have got really bad uh, leaky gut get rid of that okay take your television out of your room chad i said to switch the slide you said get rid of that i took rid of that sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's greek people <laughs> and they came up with the language i'm just saying the english language all right so um essentially um I, i'm going to go into the solutions now but i just wanted to let you guys understand that the thyroid will be compromised any healing will be compromised uh, deborah who's got an autoimmunity called rheumatoid arthritis it's not going to heal heal if she keeps ignoring the signals to get her circadian rhythm which is when the sun rises and the sun sets, people, and connecting to that. Because if you lived outside in a tent, you would never fall asleep late because people, I always ask this question to people, what time would you go to sleep if you lived in a tent in your backyard with zero technology? And they're like, I don't know, like 10? I'm like, okay, it's winter time now. The sun goes down like five, five-ish. You ain't staying up until 10, 11, 12, one. Because you're gonna be like, I'm so bored. And those hormones are going to go right into place and do their job. Now, there is a hormone, and I should have had a slide of a person on the toilet. <laughs> it's called ADH. It's an antidiuretic hormone. This hormone is the shite. And I was watching Chris Master John, which a lot of the stuff he says about keto is very, very, uh, what is it, biased because he doesn't do it. So he's like, oh, it's so dangerous. I'm like, well, you don't do it, okay? <laughs> So be careful with your anecdotal stuff. But otherwise, he's really, really intelligent guy. Yeah, probably seven. So I was in Af an African village in my twenties, and um, there was a lamp, but it was like this. It was like one of those like investigation lamps above a, above a table, table in a dark room. It was like this light in the background. So we can take away that slide, so we can show the background of this. Oh, yes. 
Yeah. So it was about that light in that room that I stayed in, in a village called Arusha in Tanzania. And I was like, I go to bed like one, two. Everybody's packing up to go to bed like 6.30. Like bed, like sleep by seven-ish. And no later than eight for sure. And I was like, I'm going to be sitting up for another, another like five, six, seven hours. But after the fourth day, out. That hormone, the ADH kicked in and blocked the pee and, and my melatonin production was quite high. And I was literally having the best sleep of my life at that period when I was in Africa for two months and still have not had the best sleep that I had at that time. See, how does that affect someone who works from midnight to noon? It means that your, your, your body ages. That's what it, what it does. I have a hard time sleeping and probably will spend 20 hours a day awake. Yeah. So night shift workers, second and third shift night workers, the only thing that you can do is create routines. Because if you, everyone I do these consultations with, they're like, well, I, you know, I eat at different times, especially if you're the third shift night, what night worker, you wake up this time one day, you have, you all know what I'm talking about. Oh, I eat, wake up at this time. Oh, I eat at this time. It's not consistent, you know, because you're always chasing sleep or always chasing, you know, like you have to sleep till the middle of the day as a third shift night worker. And then you've got a small window for yourself. And so these are these people who are the ones who have like heart disease and have issues and skin issues and gut issues. They don't get healthy, especially the older that you get. So I wake up between 5.30 and 6 and I like to get up when the sun rises. I, my entire life, cannot sleep past the sun rising. I got ants, pants, need dance. So luckily my cortisol is in the right rhythm in the morning. But when I work on my computer and I don't wear these or if I'm just working and straining, then I'll wake up. So bed is for sleep. So don't read a book in bed, read a book in a chair, put it down and then go to your bed because your subconscious mind will understand that sleep, lying is for sleeping and uh, doing anything that requires focus is out of the bed. Just get out of the bed. Don't lie in bed and watch TV ever unless it's like, you know, unless it's like raining outside and it's a Sunday and y'all want to chill with your guy or girl and just, you know, watch a movie. But other than that, the, the TV really shouldn't be in the bedroom. Now let's talk about, uh, the next slide. So those are blue light blocking glasses, very similar to the ones I have here. And, um, these are very light in that tinted yellow color. They're designed to block the light from lamps, bathroom lights, kitchen lights, because even if you put a screen, if you put a screen um, filter on, that's a blue, uh, blue light blocking filter. And if there's a freaking light on and a lamp behind you, it doesn't matter. You're still being exposed to friggin' blue light that tells your body it's still daytime when it's nighttime. So these work. It takes about 10 days to even notice, but you'll notice you'll start dreaming. See, you can see the freaking ring lights in that reflection. Um, you will start to great. notice. Thank you. You will start to notice over about 10 days that these things really do help with all the lamps plus the screens. Great info, your skin glows. So are you excellent teacher? Can't wait to, to the sleep tips. Okay, cool. Thank you. Or an, I am an excellent teacher. Can't wait for the tips. Okay. Uh, can't sleep in the dark room during day hours and then perform work, career, and whatever time it happens to be at. Seems if the light triggers the response, should be able to adjust it. Can't sleep in the dark, in a dark room during the day hours? Yes, you can. You better fix that room so it's dark. Okay. We design our lives. You don't have to do anything, especially if you live in the U.S., now, uh, so these are blue light blocking glasses. I got, I have two pairs, actually I have three, actually four. <laughs> um, I've got really, really dark red ones. I've got orange ones and I've got two sets of these types, which you can be at parties, people's homes, at work if you're a night shift worker, second or third. Um, yeah, these are great or work at the, in front of the computer at home at, in the evening. You put these on when the sun goes down and people are like, so do I wear them when I sleep? I'm like, yeah, you wear them when you sleep. No, you don't wear them when you sleep. Jeez. <laughs> you take them off when you sleep. 
Uh, okay, so let's go to the next slide. So they're, they're from $7 to, to 50 bucks, depending on the brand. This, this one was like 50 bucks, and I've got another pair that exactly the same that were seven bucks called Gamma. These are the older ones, clearly. Now, another way that the solutions for better sleep are things like diaphragmatic breathing. The reason why I'm showing this slide, what's the time? The reason why I'm showing this slide is because I'm just taking the time, y'all. Okay. Because my tech guy's got to go soon. We've got 15 minutes. Yeah, we'll get through the slides. Uh, or I can go to my Superfly watch and check the time. Oh. <laughs> Wonder Woman. Okay. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, thank you. Um, so this is a picture of uh, somebody showing how to diaphragmatic breathe. That's diaphragm attic. Now, when you are in the relaxed state, you're breathing in through the, yes, you're breathing in through the nose. Breathe in, breathe in, fill the belly with air. See that belly with air? And then, thank good, great abs. No, then you exhale. So you hold that breath in for about four seconds and then you exhale slowly. That's called diaphragmatic breathing. Now the reason why people do this is because a lot of you guys, I've said this a bazillion times, you have pronated shoulders, you sit like this at a desk, C-shaped spine, that makes all your muscles tense up, your central nervous system is tense. A lot of you guys have sciatica on the right side from the butt cheek down. Those who don't know what sciatica is, it's an impingement on the sci sciatic nerve that starts at the lower back on the right side and goes all the way down the leg and you're like, why is it hurt right there? Well, that's why. So that's why these breathing techniques, when you're at your job sitting at a desk, will you know, hold the breath you know, four times and you do it a couple of times every hour at your job to get that, all those muscles to relax so you can be fabulous. That's why you diaphragmatic breathe, right? And that helps to bring down that cortisol, that rel relaxes your muscles, and that starts to get the hormonal production especially you guys between two and four in the afternoon, I'm not, I'm talking about day shift workers, that there's that cortisol shift where cortisol was on its highest. And now it's about to go down and melatonin production now can go up in that afternoon when the sun goes down and doing these diaphragmatic breathing techniques. And it's, this takes about a month and then you'll start to notice that you're deeper in sleep and start to repair and make those ketones because that's when you make them is at night. So let's go to the next slide. Magnesium. Okay, so I was going to put different brands, but then I knew if I put a, a screenshot of the different brands, you guys, well, what's the best one? So basically, magnesium is a very, very important mineral that also has a, a lot to do with your central nervous system. So when you take magnesium at night, at least an hour before bed, everything with the breathing or like a warm bath or shower, not right before bed, but at least an hour or two before bed, and then you take the magnesium an hour before bed and you can take, it just depends on how people's uh, gut responds to it. So you can take between 150 and 400 milligrams. Now some people go up where it's as high as 800 milligrams, but that's very uncommon. People are normally sitting between two and four. Magnesium glycinate, that's spelled G-L-Y-C-I-N-A-T-E, glycinate is the uh, easier to break down into the body and start to hit that central nervous system to relax you. Now, a lot of you guys, yes, Deborah is saying that magnesium glycinate is amazing and eliminated her migraines. That's another thing when people have chronic migraines, the first thing I ask them is, do you take magnesium? And nine times out of 10, they don't. And if they do, they'll be taking calm. So calm doesn't affect your central nervous system for relaxation as much as glycinate, that's gonna affect back here. Yes, that makes you poop. So for those who have, yeah, yes, yes it does. <laughs> for those who have constipation, now constipation can come from not sleeping, which can affect the thyroid, downregulate the thyroid hormone. And um, when the thyroid hormone's downregulated, with T3 is downregulated, you start to develop hypothyroidism, then things like pooping become too much work for the body, so it just shuts down, peristalsis shuts down, digestion shuts down. 
You guys don't eat late at night because food doesn't digest very well at night because your body's trying to get into a, this hibernation state so it can repair and digesting foods is one of the, the hardest things for the body to do, which should be in the daytime, which is when cortisol should be and all those things that are breaking down the body should be in the day. But when you're eating late at night, your body's breaking down and freaking out and it can't do 20 things at once. So it doesn't digest fully. Then you wake up the next day, not hungry. So stop eating so late, people. Magnesium glycinate. Now, let's go next slide. Okay. That's all about meditation. We should have some chimey noise, but we didn't have enough time to put it together. But meditation is just not a vegan hippie thing. I love you vegans. <laughs> It's also about, it's so funny because I went to Bali. I was like, there are vegans everywhere. What's going on? <laughs> Scared me. And they were like doing meditations and yoga. And not that I'm against yoga. Anyway, so meditating. The reason why I chose this picture is because it was so beautiful. It was like nice summer, spring day, sitting on like a boat dock, just chilling. Now, this person meditating, they don't have to just think one thought. They're just keeping out the negative thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Our brains are wired to be in a stress mode, especially when the hormones are responding. They tell the brain what to think. Adrenal overload, brain overload. Da, da, da. Bad gut, brain overload. It goes like there's this nerve that goes all the way down and it's called the vagus nerve. And it's talking to the brain. Bad, nasty gut, bad, nasty brain. And of course the hypothalamus pituitary axis affects the adrenals. You start cranking out cortisol and getting anxiety and you know having panic attacks because you're not doing that what also creates a uh, panic attacks and depression is uh, blood sugar like this 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 and this because you guys are intermittent fasting you're eating one meal a day and everybody who promotes those diets don't talk about what if you have racing thoughts what if you have adrenal insufficiency what if you have a thyroid ins insufficiency what if your menstrual cycle isn't you know uh consistent what if your testosterone's lowered should you be doing one meal a day or intermittent fasting no but they don't talk or, or, or hypoglycemia chronic chronic fatigue people don't understand food is energy and food is medicine so when you ain't eating it okay you can mess up other systems in your attempts to find autophagy and also to regulate your insulin. That's the reason why I love keto. And now I'm talking about sleeping on keto properly or keto carnivore or even low carb high fat because a part of my protocol is freaking meditate, people. Just find a place where you clear out your mind. Just keep out the negative thoughts, right? Because we don't have the inclination to have positive thoughts. You know why? Because we are hardwired to be in a stress state, right? No, but I have an idea. What? Let let them come to liberate and meditate and learn how to meditate. Well, most of my people are not here in LA, but yes, okay. you guys can come to liberate, and we can put that in the show notes where I. But then I don't want stalkers either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. okay. Well, this is not my home. They can stalk you. How's that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Meditation, this is a great idea. Now, of course, it's the winter time. Y'all can't do this stuff. Do I think Dr. Dingleberry makes a lot of mistakes on his videos? <laughs> and I'm not listening to Metallica, okay? <laughs> um, the problem is, and, he, and I've said this a million videos, and he's probably gotten back to him, poor guy. <laughs> he's like, that girl is hating on me. I'm really not, you know, I just, people become misinformed and they think you, they can take some kale shakes and some supplements and some electrolyte products, you know, instead of trying to find better things like, um, nature's finest, which is the organ meats like trachea for your vitamin C, liver for your everything, vitamin C and zinc and selenium. Selenium is also in freaking pork which I should have downloaded a picture of my, um, I wonder if I can show the pork that I ate. I ate some friggin' pork shoulder, it's called pork butt. So fabulous, so fabulous. Let's see here. 
I can pull it up because I was showing my friend my Thanksgiving dinner. So this was, I don't know if you guys can see it, this was my, you can kind of see it. So that right there is the pork. It was six ounces too much. That's more than half a stick of butter. And then I had avocado because I'm not, I didn't have a carnivore meal that day. And so, and here's the thing. So I would never eat six, six ounces of meat ever. My friend cut it for me because she cooked it and I didn't want to be rude and be like, can you take a lot of this back? So I just ate it. We started eating around four. I felt stuffed like a brick was in my stomach until the next day because normally I eat between two to three ounces of a, out of the six ounces. And that affected my sleep because my body has to work over time to di digest all that protein. So all you dum-dums out there, let me call you dum-dums, but I'll call you dum-dums anyway, who are doing high protein diets don't understand how the body needs all this equipment to digest food, okay? Protein is not easy to digest. It's great because it encourages stomach acid, right? Motility, digestive enzymes, prote protease, all of these enzymes that help in, in, in lipase to help you break down fat and proteins. So yes, eating protein is great, but eating that much of it, because the, the, the assembly line gets backed up. It's like, I can't break it down and chew it and, and, and strip out the amino acids and the fat and use it for all this repairing of the body because I'm just stuffing a lot in at night when my body's like, are you kidding me? I just left my job. Now you want to get back in the car, want me to get back in the car, drive to my job, clock in and start digesting food. How does that make any sense? How are you going to, sir, three minutes? Yep. Really? Okay. What are the, what slides do we have next? I think, I think we're done. Okay. How to stop waking up in the middle of the night to pee. This is really, really quick. And that's a hormone called ADH, which is the antidiuretic hormone I mentioned before. And to get that production up, first of all, you have to do all the routines, have a rhythm, go to bed early, don't eat late at night, diaphragmatic breathe, use your blue blockers, use magnesium, take all your activity like dishes and showers, try to do that earlier in the night. Don't take your devices to bed. And then you want to eat liver because you want really nice sources of zinc in your diet to help to produce ADH and B12. And of course, vitamin D, all of these nutrients are really important to help create more ADH. So if you look right here, the ancestral, a lot of you guys who can't get grass fed organ meats, and that company, they've got a blend of all the organs in one supplement. This will help ADH. So I have a discount code. And you guys know that I've been approached by a gazillion, well, I've told this, a million people over the years to be to have an affiliate program. And I've said no to every single one. I almost said yes to the infrared, but then it gave me melasma. And I was like, okay, that's a no. But these people, y'all, everybody knows it. Ancestral is the best company. I have no fear in pushing the frack out of them. So there you can get certain organ meats for certain problems. You have adrenal issues, thyroid issues. It's got brain for vitamin D, trachea for vitamin C, and so forth and so on. Um, you can watch this on the replay. Definitely, Melissa. Um, and do we have um, any more slides? So we can just take all this away and nope. just put it. Let's zen us out to a nice zen image. Just one second. Yes. And can we get rid of all of this promotional stuff? I just wanted to get rid of it. Great. Okay. So, um, and I think my Greek God guy, go he's got to go and he's working at Liberate. He's going to start another stream for someone else. So I, how do I stop this stream? Uh, I will come back before I start because I need uh, something from the stream. So you have like 10 minutes to wrap it up. Perfect. 10 minutes to wrap it up. I'm going to answer you guys' questions. Greek guy, I can't look at the old freaking comments. I gotta go to my own phone. Okay, I've gotta go to my phone to get the older comments going. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what's the about sciatica on the left side? Um, I believe the sciatic nerve is on the right side. Magnesium glycinate is, okay, sure, I already read that. What about salt? I heard it's good for the nervous system. Yes, it is. So I've explained to people you can have from five to eight grams of salt a day unless you have high blood pressure. And that's for people who've been eating garbage for so long or have stress that their their artery, their arterial walls already pressured with a lot of fluid because all salt does, one of the things it does is increase fluid, but it's very good for you. We sweat it, we need it. 
Um, let me see. Great idea. Yep. Not overeating is very important. Exactly. Stephanie, can you recommend how to relieve light headaches, vertigo? Oh yeah, definitely. It started two days ago when I re uh, reduced carbs from 60 to 40. So 40 is too high. Um, the reason why you're experiencing the headaches and vertigo, so the headaches are probably coming from uh, mineral deficiencies, magnesium, pot potassium. Now, potassium, it, you can, I've been really against the potassium su uh, supplements, but I've been researching. Most potassium supplements are potassium chloride, so I've been researching that potassium citrate is a le way easier on those kidneys. Um, you don't have to take this recommended dose of 4,700. That's ridiculous. That comes from people having, like eating standard American diet, standards of potassium, uh, sodium balance. And um, uh, 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 you can get your electrolytes from uh, sodium from salt, obviously Celtic or gray salt or, you know, the, um, oh, that is gray salt or the Redmond's real salt or the Pakistani, Pakistani um, or I do a blend of it, Pakistani uh, pink salt. Uh, potassium can come from a meat broth, uh, bone marrow, or uh, organ meats. And um, for those who are especially doing keto carnivore, and magnesium is the only supplement you really have to take. Let me see, Stephanie, do you recommend how to relieve light? Okay, I read that. Vertigo, this vertigo is stress, okay? So all the stuff that I mentioned in this stream today, when you're doing keto, you have to make sure that you're eating, unfortunately, in the very first month, every couple of hours. So your blood sugar doesn't go like this, and then you don't have an adrenal response or hypoglycemic response, and then less of a cortisol response. So the diaphragmatic breathing, the straight posture, the plumb line, straight plumb line, to do keto right when it's more calm in your life. Don't try to like have a night shift job and do this and do that, and don't get enough, and don't overeat protein, eat too fast, and get away, stay away from the keto flu, and you might be eating a food a lot on keto that you're having a sort of an allergic reaction to, which might be creating the vertigo, the cortisol response, inflammatory response. So people start doing butter coffees and almond flour and freaking cheese and nuts. And then they start feeling sick and they're like, oh, I thought you were supposed to do that because 5 million videos say that. Urgh. Let me see. Uh, will this be? Yeah, okay. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, Mila, you need to, I really suggest you book a consultation or at least join them. I have a keto course because on that course, I respond to people individu individually and could find a little bit more about your background to then, because without a background, I don't know what age you are. I don't know your lifestyle, eating habits, body fat percentage, health issues, autoimmunity. So how can I tell you really what to do with vertigo? I could only just speak generally. Hi, Stephanie. How about sleep position? Does it matter? Yes. Now, people say different things for different reasons. Like you're supposed to be sitting on sleeping on your side with like your arm this way and your knee over like arm here and the knee like this. You're supposed to be sleeping on that side. Or if you're sleeping on this side, um, people say that you should sleep on your left side because there's less organs, you know, especially if you guys, uh, and then, but the stomach and the bladder and the heart are on the, on the left side. No. Oh yeah. Yeah. People say sleep on the left side and on the right side because there's more organs to deal with. And it just depends on what issue you have, which side you should sleep on. Because if you've got ulcers in your stomach, if you've got you know, urinary tract infection or kidney stones or no, no, you've got oxalates in your urethra or something like a UTI. It would be pretty painful if you had ulcers to sleep on the left side. If you've got gallbladder issues, liver issues, blah, 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 sleep on the left side and don't sleep on the right side. So it's pretty much depending on how sick you are as a modern human. Uh, otherwise, you can sleep on your back with a pillow under your knees. That would save both sides of those poor little systems. Um, let me see, I haven't had a problem with glycinate so far. Some people do, but most people don't. That's the reason why I recommend glycinate. Uh, it didn't seem to affect my numbers when testing my blood sugar and ketones. That was Deborah, my moderator, explaining her experience with glycinate. Melissa says, what's the difference between citrate and glycinate? Which, so Mel Melissa, I think you just joined the chat. So glycinate accesses more, accesses your central nervous system more. So that's the reason why people get sleepy on it. And people aren't consistent with it. I'm like, you dum-dums, you're not getting enough magnesium from your, I'm not really, people call them dumb, but I am, um, from your food. So we have to take supplemental magnesium. What's up, vegan deterioration? I've been watching your videos all week, girl. Keep them going. Keep them going. 
Um, and so you want to, citrate is for uh, peristalsis and gut motility and getting that poop out. And so a lot of you guys have compromised gut walls and vegan deterioration. I saw your Instagram, girl. You got some foods on there. I'm like, mm -mm, honey, be careful. And be careful for some of them grapes. They got a lot of oxalates in them, honey child. <laughs> oh, vegan deterioration. I saw your video saying that you tried keto but couldn't do it. It didn't work for you. Now, I hate when vegans say this. I really, really do. But you didn't do it right. <laughs> and the reason why I can say that is because... I was going to comment, comment on your video, but I can't stand when people comment on my video. You don't know what you're doing. So I didn't say that to you, but now that you're in my chat, I'm going to tell you, honey child. Uh, I also started uh, reading uh, Dr. R. B uh, Bernstein, Diabetes Solution. It, it's great, but it's a little outdated, Mila. Like he doesn't really understand ketosis or ketones or anything like that or gut or lifestyle issues in its entirety. And so vegan deterioration, this is like a good video. You guys go to her channel. It is the best. I like, I laugh my arse off, my ass off. I can say ass. Um, see the way she breaks down her videos, like seriously, vegan de deterioration. Nobody is like you on the internet. Well, no one's like me either, but there's no one like her. <laughs> Always going more for carnivore than keto. Um, okay, so here's the problem, vegan deterioration. All those carnivore people don't do keto. It's keto carnivore. It doesn't work. It just doesn't. Like, they don't understand. It takes a lot of equipment to break down protein. People are overeating protein. They don't fully digest that protein. And it's really, if you have any uric acid buildup, any problems with leaky gut, histamine intolerance, or low stomach acid, you don't digest, especially when people go straight to the red meat. It's hard to digest. And when you're overeating it, you know, I'm five foot three, so I was explaining that I ate six ounces of pork on Thanksgiving because my friend made it and I didn't want to be rude, so I ate it all. And I've got great digestion. And it literally was like, uh, I woke up not hungry, which people like, they're like, oh, I'm not hungry. But see, I really understand my body's hormones and signaling. You have to eat high fat. You have to eat the right fats. You have to find out what foods that your system can tolerate if you do have a gut wall uh, compromise, which you probably do because you were a vegan for so many years. Just saying. So there's a lot of little things that you need to do when doing carnivore. And carnivore people are like, just eat a bunch of meat. It matters the type of meat. Like all those things. And because of this ancestral supplements that I'm taking, it's awesome. I take brain for vitamin D. I take trachea for vitamin C. I take liver for everything, including that zinc and copper and selenium. And there is selenium there's a lot i didn't realize how much selenium was in egg yolks and and in meat i didn't understand how much was in pork there's a lot in pork so y'all stop being afraid of pork okay let me see okay i got i got a few more minutes i'm getting the wrap-up signal okay i can i can down 200 grams of butter with no problem but i can only consume about 100 grams of beef before, uh, what is it? Grief, 100 grams of beef. Are you a woman? Because if you're a woman, 100 grams is too much. Beef. Cornelius, no. Oh, it's a guy? Yeah. Cornelius. Oh, yeah, Cornel Cornelius. Oh, it's it's Patterson. It must be a black dude. Because um, only black people name their kids like strange names, right? Vegan deterioration. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, so grief. Uh, so, um, wait, wait, wait. 100 grams beef before satiated. Is there a difference in in the what? I can down 200 grams. Yes, because if you're downloading uh, beef, you guys meat takes you need you need a gallbladder and you need all those digestive enzymes to break down protein and fat. When you're eating fat by itself, it's not dense like meat. That's why it's harder to down uh, the meat. We see per day not 100 grams per me per day of protein. Your guy, that's too high for keto. Yeah, that means your fats aren't high enough. Your protein should be under nine. And I don't even know how tall you are or how active you are. And I know he's telling me to wrap up. Okay, just, just one last question. One last question. Okay, what do you Thank think you about... Sure. What? Z, Sophia Clemens? What? I don't even know her. Based on Hungry? Based on Hungry? Should look up her, the advocate meat and fat diet to fat to protein. No, we don't do the two, the one. We do the digestion. We do, like, if you've got any type of kidney, uh, digestive stomach acid, lifestyle, activity level, you don't, you guys, our bodies are not calculators. 
right? Everybody's body is damaged differently. So you can't just go two to one protein or, you know, one pound of meat per pound of uh, protein or half a kilo or a kilo. Kilo is closer than, than the poundage. Fat around the kidney is pure fat. It is, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pure, pure fat and has to be cooked. All right, I'm getting the wrap up. I thought I could go as long as I wanted to, as long as I turned off the stream. No. True? You did say that. Yes, before the class. After the class, it is 5.30. Oh, okay. Uh, 5.30, I have to start the other one, and I need the uh, You need all the equipment. equipment. All right, equipment. you guys, yeah. thank you so much for joining this chat. Don't forget, if you guys want a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. You guys, don't forget to go to Vegan Deterioration's channel and subscribe. You can also... Do Mr. Yorksova, good night, Franz. Udo says, uh, it's, uh, I gotta go to sleep now. Um, good night from Sweden. Because I lived in Sweden for a long time, so I can read and write it. And he's standing right here, like, say hello to the crowd. Yes, I need to yeah, say hello. Pleasure watching this is a stream. Hi, like crowd. This. Okay, crowd. <laughs> so this is my Greek guy. He's my, my bestie. Yeah. And we're gonna go because he's gotta work uh, on another stream. Really at Liberate, sorry. At Liberate. Only for today. We might change the life. For uh, Wednesdays. Wednesdays, so we can have like two hours full yeah, that'd be good. Right. of yeah, okay. stuff. Okay, great. Okay, so sorry again. Yes, go to Stephanie Ketogenic for my uh, my Instagram and Stephanie the Business Person on my Facebook fan page. Thank you everyone for joining the chat. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and thumbs up. And thanks, guys. And I'm out because it's time to go to bed soon. Right, it's nighttime now. <laughs>